So welcome everyone to this short video. In this short video, I want to show you how you can use IFTTT to integrate push notifications into your digitalization application that we're building in our course. So uh, having push notifications on our smartphone is a nice thing. And if we don't have our own application that is capable of doing so, we can use a free service like IFTTT. And this is going to show you how you can set up IFTTT and integrate it into our JavaScript project. So first of all, you need to sign up for IFTTT and I assume you have already done that. So if you haven't, this would be your first step. And once you log into IFTTT, this is um, what you should see. It should look similar to what you see here, but you don't have all those um, boxes here. These boxes um, show the services that I'm currently using and you might have um, none or or maybe just one of them. So IFTTT is a very simple to use um, service. It is made up of rules. So you can define a rule that says, if some trigger occurs, then do something. And what the if and the then is, is basically what they call services in IFTTT. So th there are different services that you can use. For example, you can use an email service to send emails uh, you can use location-based services to recognize whenever you're entering a certain area, uh, like your, your home or something like that. And you can use push notifications to send notifications through the IFTTT app. And that's what we're going to use as, a tr as a, an action. And as a trigger, we want to use our own application. And to integrate our own application, we can use so-called webhooks. And webhook, that's simply a URL that we're going to send a post request to. And whenever we call this URL and send the required information along with it, IFTTT will then execute the trigger. And if we say the action should be to create a push notification on a smartphone, then it will do that. So in order to have that webhook properly set up, we need to first enable it in our IFTTT account. So to do that, we click on our small um, profile avatar and then we see my services and you click on my services and then you should see a list of all your um, connected services and so the one that we're looking for is not here it's called webhooks so we go to search and i simply enter webhook down here and press enter so this will give you, give you the connections and another tab called services. And if you click on services, you will see the webhooks service and click on that box. And when you click on that box, you get an overview of what it does and then you can click connect. It will take some time, but now it's done. Now you it says service was connected successfully. And when you click on documentation, uh, you will see uh, a new web page that tells you how you can use webhooks. And I'll do that now. So it's important to know that there's a key that is generated just for you. So this is different for your account. You will need to, uh, you will need this key. You will need to copy it in a second into our application. But I first want to explain to you how webhooks work. So webhooks, um, as I said, are based on calling a certain URL and the URL you see here. And there's one placeholder that we can change it's the event name so for example if we have a, an event name that's called maybe I don't know um, a button button um, was pushed so we we have in our application our LED button and we push it and we want to trigger an event based on on a button push that we could call that button push and then um, if we now call this URL we can we can so we, we can test this URL and um, say okay use button push and what you get down here is a curl re request which you could use to test the URL and see whether it works. And then we have three values that we can use to transmit more information. So for example, if you want to, I don't know, notify the user whenever we push the button about the current temperature um, and we have a temperature um, sensor uh, connected to our, device, um, to our application, then we could put in the current temperature here. Of course, we will do that from the code later on, but we can, we can play around with, with these values um, and, and, and test them here. So important to know is we need to copy um, this um, key later on. 
And so this would be the page where we get the key and where we can um, generate the URL that we're going to be using later on. So now I'll, I'll go back and here you can also test it. So we, we could um, now, uh, in the next step, we need to set up a, a so-called app um, applet in IFTTT that actually does something whenever we trigger this. So this is what we'll do next. I'll go back to IFTTT and now I click on my avatar again and go to my applets. So this is going to be um, the place where I can create a new applet. And that's what I'll, I'll do now. Um, so I click on get more and I use the webhook service and actually I didn't want that. I was here already. So how can I create a new app? Create. Yeah. So we need to use create. Um, I was wrong. So I click on create and now we get the if this then that template and now we can click on if this this is the trigger so i click on the plus symbol and now i can choose webhooks as a service which we have just configured so now it tells me again what it is and i'll just click on that one to to actually use it now i need to define the event name that should trigger this certain app and i'll just call it um, i don't know button push the event name will be button push and now i create the trigger so now we have the if webhook and the event button push was pressed, then what should happen? And now I click on the that part. And now we want a notification. So I type in noti and I will see notification right away. Click on it. And now we can distinguish between two different types. The one is a simple notification, um, which, which we'll be using. And the other one is a more rich um, notification, which can also include a title, an image, a link, and so forth. So you can play around with that as well. But for now, let's keep it simple and use the the um, simple notification. And I click on that as well. So now we can we can uh, customize our message. So currently, it's the event named event name occurred on the Maker Webhook service. Well, that's not what I want. I want um, something like you pushed the button. And now whenever somebody has pushed the button, I want to send the current light value, just for an example, to the smartphone. The current light level is, and now we can use ingredients, which is basically the extra information that we can send over the post um, request. So we have bas basically three and we have occurred at, so it's a timestamp, but I'll use the first one, value one. And as you can see, it's going to be in these double curly braces. Uh, so we can we can add more. We can add up to three values along with the event name and the occurred at. So the light level is value one, and I create the action. So now, when this is created, we can actually give it a test run. Um, so this is now a, a finished app applet, and I click on finish to, to actually finish it. And now we just need to remember that we have the button push event. And now we can go back to our services and go to our, uh, our webhooks that should appear in the list now. Click on the webhooks and now go to documentation again. That's where we have been before. But now that we have actually set up a um, an applet that should do something whenever we send this button push. And now let's just say the value for the light would be, I don't know, 10,000. Um, that would be 100 lux. So now we can test this. So it should now trigger this URL along with this value. And if I set everything up correctly, I will receive a notification on my smartphone. And there it is. Um, so it says you push the button, the current light level is 10,000. So I don't have the video camera set up. So you just have to believe me that it worked. And now let's see how we can integrate this into our application. So what I do right away is I copy the key because the key is going to be something we'll, we'll need. So I hit copy and now I go to our coding template. And this should be familiar to you already. This one is basically the coding template that, that we are all using in this course. And I set it up so we can use the IFTTT service. So 
as I said, I have a couple of devices connected here. Um, basically, the important thing is, is the um, RGB button bricklet, which I'll use to push and trigger the event. And then I have an ambient light bricklet, which will um, serve as the extra information that I'm going to convey. So how it's set up, I have my light and my button up here and I, I store the current light value on a global variable. And so here, here we set everything up. This should look familiar to you. So whenever I now press the button, and I'm clearing, so I get button was pressed with every press. And that's because in the button change down here, we simply lock button was pressed. We don't actually need that. I just want to show you that it works. But in, on top of that, we call another function called send IFTTT push notification. And this is um, a function that I have put into the utils. So in the coding template, you will find the utils JS. And when you click on that, it will give you all the util functions that we're using currently. And there's the send IFTTT push notification as well. And if you open that, you will see how it's implemented. Um, basically, we are passing the event name, the key that is going to be generated from your account, and then the three optional values. So you don't have to set these. And then what's happening, the URL is being composed from these different values that we pass. And then we use fetch to actually make an uh, HTTP request of the type post and and that's it and that's it and we get back a response it, it will only take a, a second or so and you should uh, get a true um, value return from this function which you don't usually have to deal with so you can simply send this function past the event name and the key and the three values which are optional and then you should get the notification if everything was set up correctly so let's test this. Um, so this was actually called button push, not button event. So let's change that to button push. This is important. If you have the wrong event name, it will not work. You have to have your applet in IFTTT set up for the exact event name that you're using here. And this is the the key. And let me let me double check whether this is the same. It's actually a different one because I re-analyzed analyzed the webhook service and you get a new key with each um, service initialization. So this is the key. You simply copy it from the documentation. This is the event. And then I use the first value, value one, um, to transfer the current light value. And as you can see, the current light value, if I now um, uncomment these lines, this is the light device. It will register a listener to get notified when the light is changed. And I want that to occur every two seconds. And basically we lock the value to the console and we save the value to the global variable. So that's that's everything. That's quite a simple setup. And um, now I'm refreshing this to reinitialize devices and it found five devices. And now every five, uh, sorry, two seconds, we should see a new value here. And now I'm holding my hand over it to be very small. Now, yeah, so this works. And now whenever I push the button, and I'll do that now. So the button was pressed, it should appear here, it does. And now I'm looking at my smartphone and I did get a new notification. It says, you push the button and the current light level is 44850. So I got this value, which is exactly the value that was uh, that has occurred before I pushed the button. So this is how you can use the IFTTT service. Um, you can use, of course, call it from any trigger you like. So if you want to have a notification based on a temperature that exceeds a certain threshold, well, you all know how to do that with if then else statements. Um, I used a simple, a single uh, button trigger, but you can um, use your imagination to integrate it with any trigger you like, sending any information that you like and creating notifications as you need them. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to comment or ask on Slack. Happy coding.